podcast is just a very quick tutorial to get your first simulation up and running in Moleflow. I really recommend you to watch the other videos, especially how to uh, manage the interface of Moleflow, how to select facets. But if you want to get your first vacuum calculation down and running in 10 minutes, then you can just do this uh, quick tutorial. So basically to get a geometry on the screen, I will just get a pipe and in the test menu, you can choose a pipe with the length and radius ratio of 10 and to have a geometry with 20 sides. So this is a geometry that I have created. I will disable the volume view so that way we can see the wireframe of our system. And to get a basic vacuum calculation running, you have to select where the gas is coming from and where the gas is being pumped. So I select one side of our geometry and you can see that uh, since this test pipe is already having some preset values, I already have a desorption set up uh, with an outgazing of 10 millibars per second and a sticking of one. So let's just change it for the sake of the tutorial. Let's put a outgazing of 10 to the minus 3 millibar times liter per second. And the sticking factor of 1 means that any particle that goes out of the pipe will get eliminated. So let's see that, say that in reality it's connected to another accelerator structure. On the other side, I set a pump. Instead of setting the sticking factor, I set a pumping speed of 20 liters per second. In case you're wondering, like in the simulation parameters, I have already set that I've got nitrogen here. So that's how Moleflow can calculate between sticking factor and pumping speed. And that's it. Basically, you click the begin button and your simulation is already running. If you click on the lines, you can see that the molecules are bouncing. You can also visualize the hits on the wall or check the volume. You can see your basic system up and running. If you get too many lines on the screen, you can just uh, reduce their number. So instead of 2,000 lines, you can display, for example, 200. Then you can see individual trajectories. To uh, make it a little bit more interesting, we can calculate the transition probability. That is, what is the probability that a particle created on one side of the tube gets to the other side? For that, I go to the formula editor tool. And here we can already see that something is being filled out, but just as an explanation. When you select the gas inlet, in the top right corner, you can see that this is faucet number one. And the other side, where the particles are being absorbed, is faucet number two. So basically, A2 means that is the number of particles absorbed in the second faucet. And if we divide it by those that get desorbed on the first or all of the desorptions, which is exactly the same, then we can see that there is a 16.4% of transmission probability. Multiplying it by the average molecular speed and also like the surface of the area, we could calculate the conductance of this pipe. So this was a basic vacuum simulation, but we can do more visualizations as well. Uh, for example, we can add the profile. So I select one of the sides, I turn on the UV vector display, and I can see that this side has a V direction in the vertical way and the U direction in the horizontal way. So if I turn on a profile uh, along the U direction, which will restart the calculation, then I can go to the profile plotter tool, which is empty by default, but by choosing the profile I just created and ending it, I can see that the pressure is decreasing from about 2.5 to the minus 5 to something like 6 to the minus 6 millibars. A bit more interesting than profiles is setting up textures. So for that, I select a few facets on the side, I turn off the normal display, and clicking on the advanced button, I can set up a texture. For that, I have to choose a resolution, which should be 15 cells per centimeter, and I'm counting the reflections on the wall. I click Apply, I run the simulation, and since I have texture turned on, I can visualize the pressure on the wall of our system. If you want to know what the colors mean, you just go to Tools and Texture Scaling, and then you can see by moving your mouse over different colors, what they correspond to. Now, 
A little bit better of this is instead of uh, texturing the side of it, you can actually create a new facet in the middle that will be like your profile facet. So I select everything and delete the texture that I have created. That way I'm back to the basic pipe. And here in the lower right corner, you get a tool which allows you to select vertices or facet endpoints instead of facets. So by pressing shift, I select these four vertices. And in the vertex menu, I can ask to create a new facet. So basically, that facet will be in the middle. We'd like him to be two-sided, so it will catch sheets from both sides. And we'd like to make him transparent, so it doesn't disturb the system. I will add a texture on it. It will be, once again, the same resolution, but this time I will be counting the transparent passes. And why not give a profile on it? Once again, this time we need the V direction. So I can see that actually lines are crossing because this is a transparent facet and I have just created a facet that's measuring a pressure within the system. Finally, if you'd like to see into the system, you can actually select half of the facets. And here in the advanced view, you can turn off the draw volume, click change draw, and that way you have made part of the system transparent. And then you can look how your simulation is done. Finally, it's always a good practice to save your geometry. Solved pipe.zip. Later, when you load the simulation, actually everything you did and everything you calculated will be loaded back. So basically, you've got the results and even the last flights. So now I recommend to continue with the other webinar series to see the details and also to learn about the advanced features of Moflow.